Welcome to our video, Exploring the Goths. This video is going to be in two main parts. We're going to have the first part, which will be just exploring different connections. And then the second part will be the analysis. And are we revealing a major problem with what we've been presented with for the history for the Goths? So I'll put uh, the timestamps in the first comment below if you'd like to jump straight maybe to the analysis and that we may be bringing forward if you don't want to watch the exploring. So that's up to you. Let's get into the video. Let's start with the page on the Goths and go to our first connections. We were actually looking at this in the previous video. So it says the form Gutas is identical to that of the Guts and closely related to that of the Geats. So we were actually looking at the the region of the Goots in the previous video. So Gota, but notice here Ptolemy mentions the Gute. So we'll come back to that. That could be important. So this is the region we were speaking in the previous video of Sweden and also Gotland. So we have quite interestingly, um, yeah, you know, quite interestingly in the same region, the Goots. And if we go to a different map we'll see the Geats in a very similar region. And we're just trying to follow these words, which we're going to ask, are they all connected? And notice here we have the Jutes. So this is a, this is what's known as Jute land. It's going to be encompassing most of the country of Denmark, but also coming into Germany, if we go to a bigger map so we can see where we're looking. So here, this will be what was known as Jute land for the Jutes. And we'll just read this part here. It says, according to Bede, they were one of the three most powerful Germanic nations along with the Angles and the Saxons. Just want to mention the Angles and the Saxons because we're probably going to be speaking about them in an upcoming video. Let's go to the next connection. So if we go back to the page on the Geats, it says, for the Thracian tribe, see the Gets. Now, if we go to the page on the Gets, we see the Gets hay. And that seems to be very similar to the word that we highlighted, where we said Ptolemy mentions the Goots hay for the Goots. You know, it seems very similar to Gete. And this is going to be very significant we, we, when we do our, you know, trying to unpack this, trying to analyze this. The connection with the Gete to the Goths could be very significant. So this highlighted area here is where we're told the Goths would have been living. So that they said a Thracian related tribe, but they're not actually living in Thrace. So they're here to the north of the Danube, this long Danube river. This is a very similar region to where we saw the Ostrogoths and the Visigoths in the previous video. So yeah, we will, we will analyze this, but we're just um, exploring first. Now we're going to go to the next connection. It says, not to be confused with the Geats. So we've looked at the Geats. The Jat people, the Jat people. Okay, so we have the Jat people are traditionally agricultural community in Northern India and Pakistan. So now we are in the region of Pakistan and India, but it also says not to be confused with the Jats of Afghanistan. So we're considering Afghanistan, Pakistan, India, and we'll just look at a few pictures for um, men that we told are Jats, so very distinguished. So isn't this starting to sound quite familiar? If we think about the, the video we did earlier on in the playlist, we wanted to study the Hittites and it took us from Britain to India to China. Now in this video, we started in the region of the Norse looking at the Goths, 
and it's brought us to India. So if it is connected with the Hittites and the Goths, shouldn't it take us to China? Because that's what was alluded to here with this, uh, what brought us here with the Goth and the Goats. It says, we now discover that the Sumerians and Hittophoenicians or early Goths called themselves by the leading clans by the names of Goats. So we see we have Hitto. So we are thinking about the Hittites and the Goths. And we can see that it might take us to China. So let's carry on. Now we do have, you know, what seems to be serious scholars considering this connection with the, the Jats of Pakistan and India with the Goths. And it says, yeah, Alexander Cunningham advocated Jat is the same word as Kete in all probability. So not saying for definite, but in all probability. And we see here that it's saying that Goth and Gete could be the same. So we'll speak about that. That could be very significant. But just let's just look at one more connection for this uh, section of the video. Remember how we um, were looking at these similar sounding etymology, these words. Notice we also have uh, the Gutans. So this is going to be the next interesting one because this sounds very close to the Gutians, the glorious Gutians. So are the Goths connected with the Gutians? And this would really start to correlate to what's been said here by the scholar thinking about the Sumerians because the Gutians take us to Mesopotamia. It says conflict between the people of the Gutium and the Akkadian Empire. The Guti subsequently overran southern Mesopotamia and formed a Gutian dynasty of Sumer. So are we looking at the Goths ruling over Sumer? You know, is that what's what speaking about here? But this is going to be you know, very far back in history, the third millennium BC. So that's what we're trying to say in the previous video. Are we really getting the true picture for the Goths? And notice, not to be confused with Gutian. And we see China. So we have counties and regions in China called Gutian. And we see even a Gutian dialect in China. So that just, to me, seems very interesting. Could it really be so much of a coincidence that our study on the Hittites took us from Britain to India to China? And now we're looking at the Goths. And the scholar said that you know this could be connected with the Hittites. And it takes us from you know, the region of the Norse to Pakistan and India. And it doesn't take us all the way to you know China as well. So I don't know if you know this Gutian here in China is connected to you know the Gutian on the historical record, but we'll try to see what we can discover and what we can find to you know support that and link that. I'd like to start this analysis really focusing in on the Gete. We used this map showing the territory of the Gete, but I would also like to introduce another tribe or peoples. You know, it's going to be clearly very much connected, and that's the Dacians, the Daci. So that does say that, you know, these could be connected two main thoughts. You know, one that the Gete were related to the Dacians, you know, being neighbors or that they were the same people. Let's go to the map for Dacia. So we have the, the historical Dacia and then the surrounding countries, the modern day countries. So the first thing we notice is that, you know, it seems like the territory of the Gete seems to fall inside the, the territory of the Dacians. So is that showing that they're neighbors or is it showing that they're actually the same people? And the other thing I would like to mention, using the map from our previous video with the Goths, and this was around 300, yeah, 305 AD. 
at this point at this point in history the the territory for the goths you know it seems very similar to the territory for the dacians not exact but very similar and what we're going to be asking is are the Getae and the dacians the same as the goths and how significant is that to the study let's first try understand or look at the historical significance we're going to look at two very important figures in history if you just give give me a second to find it so two very important historical events okay alexander the great attacking the Getae in 335 bc on the lower danube and then we go to an earlier earlier historical moments we have Darius the first so a Persian king conquering the Getae and this is 513 BC so why is this significant if we think about the what we talked about with the Goths so we did that foundation in the previous video and we think about the the cultures so the theory for the Goths is tied to these cultures that we mentioned in the previous video. Let's go to the, the history, the early history for the Goths from what we presented with. So notice that the early history for the Goths starts around the first century, so 15 AD. And this is considered early history for the Goths. So that really does seem a bit strange because considering what we've seen in this video the potential from this video with the connection with the goths and the sumerian civilization so going back to the the third millennium bc but this is what we have so why is this it's because of the connection to the cultures let me try to find an example so the movement towards the black sea we mentioned that in the previous video so notice by 200 a.d the veal bark Goths. So they're connecting the Goths with the culture. If we go to the map. So the history being presented with the Goths is going to be connected to these cultures and that's going to create a timeline. It creates a timeline for when the Goths are going to be in certain regions. For this one, for example, and this is 305 AD. But the problem is if the Goths and the Getae are the same, then this theory or this uh, what we taught for the Goths doesn't seem to make sense because you would need the Goths to be in this region in order for the historical events to make sense that we looked at. So Alexander the Great attacking the Getae in 335 BC and the other one, Darius the first conquering the Getae 513 BC. Now this is 500 years before we even have, um, yeah, let's say history for the Goths according to what we presented with. So then, how can that make sense? Bearing in mind that we do, we're saying, are the Getae the same as the Goths? So if the Goths are not in this region at the time when Alexander the Great is alive and Darius is alive. You know, how, if they're not in the region, then how can those, you know, those battles take place? So it becomes very important to really um, identify if the, the Getae and the Dacians are the same as the Goths. So I just want to put this in the video because what we're saying is very important. It could be very significant. So I just would like to put this in the video. We have an antiquarian saying that you know that it's infallible that the Getae are the same as the Goths and then he gives 11 points here of other historians saying that the Goths and the Getae are the same so I just want to put this in the in the description below so that we are putting things forward you know to support the what we're saying that there are there does seem to be a lot of uh, weight behind this connection with the Goths and the Getae and then when we think about the actual the actual historian if we think about the the historian 
Jordanes. Let's see if I can find that quickly. I don't know if it was on this page. Maybe it was with the Goths. Oh yeah, sorry, it was this page. Notice how it says that the, the Getica by Jordanes, we introduced this in the previous video. It's a crucial source on Gothic history, but the title of his work is called the Getica. So his title connects the Goths with the Gets or the Gete. And this is the, you know, the crucial source for Gothic history. But when we go to the page on the Gete, we see they don't say that the Gete are the same as the Goths, but they do recognize the fringe theory. So if we go down, I just want to see if we can find this. Yeah, they do recognize that there are fringe, they call it fringe views, connecting the Goths with the Gete, and even the other connection that we mentioned in the video, the Goths with the Jats. So why, why is it considered a fringe view when this um, antiquarian is saying that it's infallible? So I think it really is about the timeline, that if you do connect the Gete with the Goths, it has a major impact on your timeline. So if they were to, to if they were to admit or to say that the Gete and the Goths are the same, it creates a problem for this theory of this migration. And, and you know, we just lay researchers. So yeah, what do we need to make of this? Because it could be very significant. Because aren't we then, you know, let's say justified if this theory that we presented with for the Gothic history, you know, is not correct. Are we not fair then to actually question the, the geography and these maps? You know, when we do, when they give us these maps, are we fair to actually question this as well? Which we are, because remember in the previous video, we said we question, we're questioning these tribes and these kingdoms with the history with the Black Sea, but it's difficult to you know explain in the video itself. So yeah, very um, significant this because it impacts what we might think about the Macedonians and Alexander the Great and the Persians. Let me know uh, what you think. Is that fair? If we, um, yeah, if people out there that know about the Goths and they can see what we're saying, is that actually a, a fair criticism or problem that we've, you know, that we see here with the with what we've been, what we've been presented with? That's going to be it for this video. I would also like to encourage our regular viewers, if you also want to comment or share something, I think we should all try be more confident to, you know, ask questions, even if we are amateurs or lay people. I think we, you know, have the right to, to ask questions about what we've been presented with. So I look forward to, you know, seeing if we do get any comments, any feedback from this video. Our next video is going to be very interesting. We're going to see if this information that we brought forward in the last two videos could connect with one of our other theories from our playlist, the history of North Africa and the Mediterranean. So I hope you'll be able to join us for that video. Take care. Bye for now.